afternoon. Praise God. He's awakening us to another opportunity <clears throat> to walk with him in faith. And so that is what we're doing this afternoon. We're walking with God in faith and trusting him and seeking his face and studying his word so that we might draw closer to him. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we come to you this morning for this afternoon so grateful for the love that you show us, for the care that you uh, protect us and provide for us, um, heal us, um, provide for all our needs, and, and we're eternally grateful, Father. And, um, this morning or this afternoon, we come to ask you if when we read your word, you would impart wisdom for us so that we might understand your will and your ways and draw closer to you by understanding you better and knowing you more intimately. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, this week's lesson is titled Baptism in the Holy Spirit, the day of Pentecost, and our daily devotional this morning is uh, titled Spirit-Filled Spirit Elders. And it's from the book of Numbers, chapter 11, verses 24 through 29. <clears throat> it reads, And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and gathered the seventy men of the elders of the people, and set them round about the tabernacle. And the Lord came down in a cloud, and spake unto him, and took of the spirit that was upon him, and gave it unto the seventy elders. And it came to pass that when the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. And we're going to verse 29. They prophesied and did not cease, but there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of the one was Elad, Eldad, and the name of the other was Medad. And the Spirit rested upon them, and they were of them that were written, but went not out unto the tabernacle, and they prophesied in the camp. And there ran a young man, and told Moses, and said, Eldad and Medad, do prophesy in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men, answered and said, My lord, Moses, forbid them. And Moses said unto him, Even thou... For my sake, would God that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them? Hmm. Okay. They went not out unto the tabernacle, and they prophesied in the camp. Okay. So, when uh, they saw that, they complained to Moses. And he said, that's none of my business. Uh, God is the one that fills them with the Spirit. So, he's the one to control them, not me. Okay, this week's lesson, Baptism in the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Central truth of this lesson is that God gave the Holy Spirit so every believer in Christ may be filled with the Spirit. Now, the focus of this lesson is that we need to understand that fulfillment of God's promise to give the Holy Spirit in abundance began on the day of Pentecost and be filled with that Spirit. The evangelism emphasis is that by a be repenting and believing in Christ, sinners are saved and can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The, cold, the golden text says, The promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord God shall call. 
That's from Acts chapter 2, verse 39. That promises the good news. Their introductory commentary says the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Truth. That's from John 14, 17. And in the world of the first Pentecostal outpouring, as well as today, there is no standard of truth apart from him. And Jesus said, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you unto all truth. In our secular world, where might makes right, and truth is purported to depend on a situation, there is a hunger to know or to believe, to possess knowledge that is never outdated or proven wrong by the courts of popular opinion. The lesson today depicts ordinary men and women, timid and frightened, being filled with God's Spirit and immediately becoming bold and fearless. When the Spirit of Truth came, the early church found a changeless, abiding source of sure guidance and absolute truth that would stand the test of eternity. No wonder those new Christians were willing to give up their lives for what they possessed. The scripture admonished us, buy the truth and sell it not. Also, wisdom and instruction and understanding and that's from the book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 23. After Simon Peter was filled with the Spirit on the day of Pentecost, he unashamedly, unashamedly stood before a huge holiday crowd and declared what he and 119 other individuals had just experienced. This verified the truth of Joel's prophecy about God's Spirit being poured out on all flesh. And that's from Joel chapter 2 verse 28 and Acts chapter 2 verse 17. Peter then boldly proclaimed the truth about Jesus Christ. This Jesus God has raised up of which we are all witnesses. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. God wants each of us to be filled with his Spirit so we will be powerful witnesses for the truth. <clears throat> okay, section one. Baptism in the Spirit foretold. Both the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts were written by Luke, a physician. See Colossians chapter 4 verse 14. A physician who accompanied Paul and Silas during much of the missionary journey into Asia Minor. Acts records many important historical events in the life of the early church that are not fully recorded anywhere else in the scriptures or in secular history. Among these are the account of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the believers on the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 4 and the ensuing story of the Spirit's evangelistic work through the lives and testimonies of those of the way. Section 1a, Wait for the Promise, Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. And it reads, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. The commentary says, in both Luke 24 and Acts 1, Luke records the final meeting of Jesus with his disciples before his ascension. 
In Luke 24, 49, Jesus said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endured with power from on high. In Acts 1 and 4, Luke records Jesus commanded his followers not to leave Jerusalem until they had received the command of the promised baptism in the Holy Spirit. Jesus did not tell the disciples how long they would have to wait in Jerusalem to receive this problem, promise, but only that the promise would definitely be fulfilled if they waited. In verse 5, Jesus compared spirit baptism with water baptism. Just as John baptized converts by immersing them in water, so Jesus would immerse believers in the Holy Spirit. Water baptism is a testimony to the church that an individual has submitted his or her life to the Lordship of Christ, while spirit baptism empowers the believer to testify to unbelievers that Jesus Christ is Lord. Okay, section 1b. Receive spiritual power. Acts chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. And it says, When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. The commentary says, The Lord ended his ministry on earth by declaring, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me. Jesus wanted his followers to know the primary purpose of the baptism with the Holy Spirit is so believers will be witnesses of God's salvation through Jesus Christ and thereby extend the ministry of Jesus unto the uttermost parts of the earth. The Holy Spirit is the third person in the Trinity. He is God, co-equal with the Father and the Son. He can be grieved. See Ephesians 4.30 lied to, see Acts 5.3, and resisted. The meaning of the word spirit is breath or wind, signifying life. See Genesis 2.7 and John 3 verses 5-8. through 8. The Holy Spirit, like Jesus, is our advocate with the Father, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. That's from Romans 8.27. We are encouraged to pray in the Spirit. See Jude 20, 1 Corinthians 14.15. Since the Holy Spirit knows what our weaknesses are and what we should be praying for. See Romans 8.26. The Spirit knows the thoughts of God. See 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. And searches the deep things of God. See verse 10. Then gives us discernment to understand the spiritual revelations he provides for us. Not only does the Holy Spirit bestow the fruit of the Spirit. See Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23. And Ephesians 5, 9 and administer the gifts of the Spirit, see 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 11, but righteousness, peace, and joy are also ours through the Spirit, see Romans 14, 17, 
as well as hope. Romans 15, 13. Wisdom, spiritual knowledge, 1 Corinthians 2 and 11, and power, love, and a sound mind, 2 Timothy 1 and 7. Jesus, Jesus promised the disciples they would soon be baptized in the Spirit. But they wondered if, the, if it were not time for Christ to set up such a kingdom as they hoped for. He told them it is not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by his own authority. And that's from Acts chapter 1 verse 7. The preeminent task of the disciples was to witness to the facts concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. The baptism in the Spirit would enable them to carry out this calling. Luke gives us an outline of the book of Acts in verse 8. Jerusalem is in the center of the events recorded in 1 1 through 8 3. Judea and Samaria witness the events recorded in Acts 8 verses 4 through 25, while the events occurring in the rest of the book of Acts may be described as taking place in the uttermost parts of the earth. And there's an insert here titled Ability, Efficiency, and Might. It says the Amplified New Testament translates the word power in Acts 1.8 as ability, efficiency, and might. The Holy Spirit gives one the ability to stand up for Christ. The Holy Spirit also gives efficiency, peak performance, maximum productivity for time and energy expended. The Spirit also gives might, which implies force and strength. The spiritual power provided by the Holy Spirit makes the Christian more than adequate for every situation of life. That was written by R. H. Hughes. Very well said. I, I agree with that 100%. I claim it, and I thank God for always providing the strength and the wisdom that I need to be the husband and father that I desire and that he desires for me to be. Um, I thank you for your time this morning or this afternoon. I pray that this lesson encourages you to seek a closer relationship with Jesus Christ. Enjoy the rest of your day.